subhanallah, the, the war in Palestine or the oppression in Palestine is something that causes a lot of us to be very sad and you know it's something we feel very bad about because it's not, it's, there's not much we can do or at least there's not much we can do directly and that's why it's always important to remember there's always a balance to things you always have to feel some responsibility you have to feel some responsibility you have to care you have to feel bad that's a good thing but at the same time you have to accept that at the, in the end of the day the result is in the hands of Allah you cannot control everything and there is a hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said something along the lines of you will never truly believe until you understand that something that comes to you was never going to miss you and something that missed you was never going to come to you so that's the belief of a mu'min that's a belief of a believer and that's something we should always keep in mind there's two sides of everything you have to feel the responsibility and you also have to accept that ultimately things are in the control of Allah and in that vein the next speaker will be speaking with the title of tawakkul a lasting legacy of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that will be judi tatari i welcome judi tatari to the stage Every single one of us here knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all humans with the purpose of us worshipping Him. But worshipping Allah does not only mean that we need to say Ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. The faith we have in our hearts could also be translated into actions. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through all these hard tests scattered throughout our life randomly to see if we will truly remain on our path. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, if Allah wants to do good to somebody, he afflicts him with trials. And the Prophet Sira teaches us so many lessons throughout the hardships that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and right now I am able to extract one main lesson we can learn about and apply in our life inshallah. That lesson being tawakkul. So what is tawakkul? What does tawakkul mean to you? Tawakkul is the quality of having complete trust and reliance on Allah no matter what the circumstances are. And so a person that has tawakkul is a person that develops an unbreakable bond between them and Allah that is caused by the trust they have in Him and that results for smoother and better times transitioning from the dunya into the akhirah. And a topic like this would generally and a topic like this would generally have a lot of emphasis in the Quran. And for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And put your trust in Allah, for Allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs. And in another ayah, Allah says, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Once you make a decision, put your trust in Allah. Surely Allah loves those who trust Him. And it is a Prophet's job to tell us more about the concepts discussed in the Qur'an. So the Prophet was once talking to a group of people and he said, 70,000 from my nation will enter Jannah without reckoning. They said, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Allah uh, the Prophet wasallam said, they are those who do not rely on incantations, nor believe in omens, nor use cauterization, but rather they trust in their Lord. And this hadith is very important because it talks about what group of people the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about, how many of them there is, and what characteristics, what characteristics they have. And the Prophet Sira, you see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through so many tests. I mean, he was going through so many hardships since he was born. But one event that really stuck out to me and um, was Am al Huzn, and it's where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam demonstrated tawakkul profoundly to the ummah. After around 10 years of revelation, the Prophet wasallam went through so many hardships and one of them being was having two very important individuals in his life returning to Allah, Khadija radiallahu anha and his uncle Abu Talib. You see, the Prophet wasallam was protected by his uncle and so Abu Talib not being there anymore led the Prophet to have harder times dealing with, dealing with with Quraysh. And Khadija radiallahu anha not being there, 
it led the Prophet وسلم, to have harder times dealing with others because she provided him with the encouragement that he needed. And the Prophet وسلم, he did not give up when hardships got in the way of his worship. He did not let that happen. He actually thought, oh, I need to spread this message to a new group of people. And that's where he saw the city of al -Taif as a fresh start for him. And that's where his journey began. And so he went to al -Taif, but unfortunately things did not turn out very well for him. He was treated so poorly that his sacred blood was left on the streets of al -Taif. And this entire situation actually reminds me of an ayah in the Quran. I'm pretty sure all of us have it memorized. It's where Allah says, Surely with hardships comes ease. With hardships comes ease. And we see here the Prophet ﷺ's hardships did not get in the way of his worship. And so following that year, the Prophet ﷺ he went to Mecca and he was blessed by the with the journey um, of the Tisra' al Maraj, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where his soul was uplifted, uplifted by the happiness and serenity he was, was brought by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from the new experiences he got. But what about us? How can we apply tawakkul in our own life? So we all know that we will go through this one very big test in our lifetime, but we should always remember that Allah never asked a person to do something more than what they can bear. And that we are all actually going through a test right now by living in this dunya. Because Allah says in the Quran, And this life is nothing but a delusion of enjoyment. And we just have to remember that no matter what gets in the way of our worship, we should not let that happen. And we should always believe in Allah and trust in Him because that will give us more time to think about our own worship rather than other people's problems. But what about a group of Muslims, Muslims living in the West? What about us living in Canada, in America, away from our families? So as Muslims living in the West, we, we're obviously faced with so many hardships like the influence, we're always afraid that we're going to be influenced by social media, by communities like the LGBTQ members, by we're always afraid that we're going to lose our identity, we're going to lose our confidence in our religion. However, it, this entire thing was planned by Allah and us being a minority in the West is actually a part of Allah's plan because Allah even says, the Jews and the Christians will never be pleased with you unless you follow their path. And as Muslims, it is our job to invite people to our path. And we should always remember that we're not the only Muslims struggling in this dunya. We're not the only Muslims struggling in the West. We have other Muslims living in different parts of the world struggling, like our fellow sisters and brothers in Palestine. They are always worrying about their life, about losing their life. And they basically have no home, no food. And we are blessed to have families that support us. We're blessed to have food and water. We're blessed to even be able to attend these conferences when we have sisters and brothers unable to do anything and they're just making du'a for Allah all the time. And I will be focusing on the Palestinian aspect in my presentation because it is the most recent um, thing that is happening right now and it is the most thing that is impacting our Muslim ummah nowadays. And so I will be comparing the events that are taking place in Palestine to the Prophet's experience during Am al Huzn. You see, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lost two individuals during Am al Huzn. Right here, Palestinians are losing nearly their entire families in probably less than an hour. And many people turned their backs against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Abu Talib's death. Right here, we're seeing that the entire West is turning their back against Palestinians. But what do they have in common? They both had tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Palestinians are able to show that tawakkul to the entire world do, while, while going through these experiences, then surely we can try to do something to prove that we have tawakkul and to teach others that we surely have such a beautiful religion. You see, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he never gave up and he, and he was holding so tight to his religion, people started wondering, what about this religion is making the Prophet hold on so tight to it. And now, Palestinians are doing the same thing. The way they're holding on to their faith is actually making people wonder, what about this religion is making them 
follow and, and stay on this path. And that is making other people learn more about it and eventually they're reverting to Islam. Alhamdulillah. And that, if you look at it from a different perspective, they're giving da'wah indirectly. And if they're doing it indirectly, then surely we can do it with a purpose. In conclusion, in conclusion, tawakkul is a very important aspect of our religion and we can all learn to apply it. And so many Muslims, they carry on this beautiful um, quality and they pass it on to, the ch to their children. And the biggest proof of it being a lasting legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is it being present um, in the pe with the people in Palestine and how they're still, they still have tawakkul and how they're still passing, out to, passing it on to their children. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.